Yes, 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 yes. That's doubles. You've got two choices. You can either get together in between, well, you kind of have three choices. You can get together in between each point, do the racket tap, uh, exchange you know, quick thoughts like, oh, did you notice she's like moving over more to protect her backhand, or she's covering the middle less now, and so the middle's open or whatever. But then all, you should always have some kind of play for the next point. And you don't have to necessarily aim your serve. You don't, totally don't have to do that. But you don't have to poach on every ball either, right? No. But you should. Like for special But depends. Like if poaching is working over and over, then you you exploit it. Yeah, yeah. Go to the well. Uh, but either the, your mindset, hopefully after today, should be: I'm either going to poach or I'm going to fake. It's never really the plan that I'm just going to stand there and uh, and do nothing. Hopefully after after today, it would be my hope for you guys. So if that's the case, if your partner can know ahead of preemptively which it is, that would be fantastic. So you can either do that by talking or by using signals. And um, are you guys open to using signals with each other? I fake signals at a turn. <laughs> nice, I like that. Mess with the other team. Just to get them to think yeah. you're, you're up to something. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So what's funny is when you use them for real, people will get so like freaked out just the fact that you're using them. For exactly for like what you said. Like psychologically they're like, oh, they're doing something fancy now. Like I need to be ready. And they almost always like try to beat you down the alley like the first time. So we're gonna practice it for real now. And you can use it or not. But having it as an option is huge because even if you talk between points, if on your way, if while you're walking up to the net, you see that they just shifted something, you can call an audible and change it up, number one. Number two, I don't know anybody in the history of tennis that's ever planned two different plans for a first serve and second serve, which means after the first serve gets missed, the returner can very safely just assume that it's just normal now and you're gonna cover your side and the server's gonna cover, there's not gonna be a poach anymore unless you throw in a signal. And now there, there's a question about, oh, which is it? Just the fact that you put the signal back there, it throws that question mark into their head about what's safe and what's not. So the signal is gonna be, is gonna be this. Uh, this is stay, and this is poach. And that's all you need to know. And that's it. What about fake? So stay, to me, means fake. Okay. Uh, exactly. Yeah, if you want, you could sometimes just stand there and do nothing. But for me personally, when I tell my partner I'm going to stay, I'm, I'm going to do something anyway. Like alley fake or uh, <laughs> fake, like so, I'm going to do something. So um, at no point should your expectation of yourself be I'm just going to do nothing. Okay. So stay means fake. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can also plan it on the, uh, in between points, but then confirm it with the signal. So we're, we're going to practice that. So Lynn, you're going to signal before each serve. And Susan, you need to confirm that signal so she knows you saw it. Because right now, Lynn has no, Lynn has no idea. You're either going to say yes or no. OK, yes. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So what's, yeah, yeah, so now give her another signal. There you go. Yeah, Lynn. All right, good plan, good job, good job. So that's your ball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if the, if the plan is to poach, then what, what she's basically telling you is you need to cover my side. Does that make sense? Good move, Lynn. Good timing. Yes, 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 yes. That's doubles. <laughs> Good job. Okay. That was outstanding. Let's review this really quick. That was a great case study for using signals. Okay, so let's see what the, what the plan was here. So Lynn signaled stay. And now watch what, what, uh, what Lynn does. So she signals, if I remember correctly, stay again. 
So she signaled stay, but she made a hop early towards the middle. And so that opens up, you know, the question mark in Andrea's head over on the other side is, oh, she must have been planning to poach. And so all this uncertainty is just causes a lot of kind of wishy-washiness with the return. And so, you know, you can pretty much give yourself the credit for getting that first volley win because of the combination of like the, the signal. So here's a, a poach signal. Now on this first one, Susan hadn't quite, yeah, thought it through, you know, all, all the way yet. So ladies, when you plan a poach, which is what was happening here, yeah, what Lynn is saying is I'm going to go all the way across, which means Susan needs to have the expectation that I'm, you can, either way, if you're serving and volleying, uh, Susan could serve and go that way. Uh, if you're planning on staying back and doing ground strokes, then right across the baseline is great. But either way, her responsibility, as soon as she confirms that poach, is that I'm covering my partner's side. So if they just hit a really great cross court like angle, we just give that point up. Yep. <laughs> Knowing. I should have stayed for a certain amount of time to see where the shot was going. I should just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. When it's an unplanned poach, um, timing it perfectly is really key because you're totally exposed. Your partner doesn't know that you're poaching. You're kind of freelancing. So if you go super early, then you're just totally vulnerable. When it's planned, your partner knows you're switching. And so Lynn can be more aggressive about going maybe a tad earlier because it doesn't really matter if they see her or not because you're going to be going over there to cover the shot. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit different uh, scenario. One scenario, your, your partner is on board and ready to cover you. And the other one, you're totally calling the shots. So uh, Lynn wins the point outright just because of the move. Uh, you can see Karen here just like wanting to redirect it. <laughs> but it's really tough. It's, it's, Lynn, you timed it well enough. It's just as she was starting to swing forwards and she's trying to like change like the racket face to make it go down the line. And that's, it's your point. Like you totally won that point without having to touch the ball. But had she made it, like look at Susan, just realizing it right now. Oh shoot. <laughs> All right, so what was the, uh, so the call here? I almost felt like Lynn was like, hey, that was fun. Like, let's try it again. So she calls the poach again. This time, Susan's on the same page. So look it, she's already starting to go before Lynn even makes her move. And now Lynn's timing it right with the forward swing. That, that's just a thing of beauty right there. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was fun to be a part of. <laughs> so even if Andrea got it past Lynn effectively, you can see Susan is going to have no problem covering that. Unless, Lynn, uh, unless Andrea just hits like a 90 mile an hour shot you know, in the alley, um, she's going to at least get a racket on it. And you're still on the point. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, and then last uh, point, Lynn calls, Lynn calls a, uh, a stay, but she goes early, which is fantastic. And so she's just totally in the head of, of you two on the other side there. And again, I'm just kind of sensing like a little bit of lack of commitment here from Karen, like just not quite sure what to do. <laughs> and Lynn hits the volley winner. Oh, another thing, the server can say no. So like, if Lynn, for whatever reason, doesn't like what she sees, like lining up, like uh, all she has to say is no, and then you show her the other one. Uh, just FYI. Same thing with serve locations. It's, it's like, it's like a pitcher-catcher relationship in baseball. Like the catcher is giving signals, but the pitcher is either saying no or, or yes, based on, what, based on what the server wants. Okay. Lynn, that's your ball. What was the signal? The signal was out. Yep. So which side is your side? Yeah, which side are you covering after you're done? I got you. Yes. I was too worried about, like, I was trying to get the serve over there to make it. <laughs> yep. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh, that's a good move, Andrea. That was really well timed. Ooh, good shot. Wow, that's a great point, ladies. All right, a couple things. Uh, first of all, the more you do this, the more kind of second nature it becomes. At first, it's like, ah, it's extra thinking, and um, it's extra time. Like, it feels like it takes a long time. 
by, we only just did two games each, and you guys were already kind of rolling through it pretty quickly, uh, especially just with the one signal and not having to do location and all that sort of thing. Um, once you get comfortable with it and you and your, your partner, you know, as a team are comfortable with it, it takes no extra time, and it, the benefit is, like, tremendous because you're making them second guess. You're on the same page. You know exactly what you're trying to do. It's just a no-brainer, uh, in my opinion, but hardly anybody ever does it. And you get the psychological benefit of they're like, oh, like you're trying to like be fancy. There, there's like a whole stack of like benefits to it, but nobody does it for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. It's just intimidating, I guess. And you don't want to be like the fancy, like trying to be a big shot. So that's an uh, important topic. Does that happen? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So just because you call stay doesn't mean that there might not be a return that you can make a move on. And so all you're saying is that there's not a planned poach. But that doesn't mean there's not going to be an opportunity to still poach anyway. So important uh, detail. Um, Karen, you were saying, oh, I'm aiming the serve based on. I'm kind of aiming the serve based on. Yeah. So let's talk about that really quick. If you know, if this is uh, Karen and. Karen's partner is poaching, and she knows that that's going to be the play. In general, here's like the target that tends to work out. Oh, <laughs> tends to work out best. If Karen serves out wide, then the possible shots for this wide uh, target. Let's say she's aiming right here, and so that pulls the returner off the court. The returner has this sp spread of shots that they could possibly hit to. And it's just a very wide range of like possibilities. If instead Karen serves to this target and pulls the returner to this spot, now the returner could hit here, or the returner could hit here. Sorry if that looks a little bit confusing, but what's the middle of the blue lines? Where's the center of the blue lines? If we were to draw halfway, right. And Karen's partner was going to poach, right? Yeah. AKA put themselves in the middle of the, the court. If Karen's partner is looking to poach and she serves for the green target, look at how much of the green spread of possible shots is not the center of the court. It becomes much easier to hit around Karen's partner if she serves out wide and puts the returner uh, off here in the corner. Man, I'm doing that a lot today. So does that make sense? So in general, if you know that the plan is to poach and you are the server, serving down the tee is going to maximize the chances of your partner intercepting the ball. It's a general, general rule of thumb. If for whatever reason, you know, the backhand, like, they just can't hit down the line and they all go cross court, then you can for sure go out wide and target the backhand. But this is like the geometrical general like, rule of thumb. If your partner is going to be in the middle of the court, you want to feed them the ball by also hitting the ball to the middle of the court. But yeah, the, the like high-level players are combining target and intention on every serve. First serve, second serve. There's some kind of plan, usually.